Hello everyone and welcome back to Parsec Games. I'm sorry, the new FNAF tutorial is coming out very very soon. I'm working on it. It's almost done. I just need to finish the editing. Uh, and I promise now in 2019 there's gonna be more videos coming out, okay? So uh, I know last year I said, uh, last, yeah, last year <laughs> in the last video I said it won't take another year and I was technically right. It's a different year, but it didn't it's uh, not 365 days that have gone by. Well, so this video is going to be about what's new in Scratch 3.0. So Scratch 3.0 just dropped yesterday. And today we're going to have a look at how it works and what's new because yesterday, uh, at least for me, um, the website was pretty laggy and just wouldn't load. But um, let's just have a look. This is the new editor. And as you can see, the sides have switched again. Oh. I didn't press anything. Okay. So as you can see, <laughs> I was about to say, there are th some things that are pretty unstable, it seems. Even though this is not the beta or alpha even, this is the full release. So um, I hope they fix these things. But anyway, so as you can see, they moved it back again to how it was in Scratch 1.4, that the preview is on the right and the coding area is on the left. And let's just look, have a look at the new blocks. So one of the new blocks is in the motion. So we used to have only this one where you could put in a certain coordinate and then it would glide to that place in this amount of seconds. Now you have this one, which is pretty similar, but it has a drop down menu and now it can just glide to a random position or to the mouse pointer. So let's add a little waiting thing and it glided to the mouse pointer. So the way you used to do it, this was um, put, putting in the mouse X and mouse Y into this one. So that's just a bit, I mean, you could already do this stuff, but it's just a bit quicker now. So another thing that has a drop down now are the pen blocks. And as you can see, there are no pen blocks here. You need to add them as an extension. So here you go to extension and then click on the pen. And now they have it here. So now the erase all, that's the new name for the clear. I think it's a bit, you know, a bit clearer. Ha, no pun intended what the block does. So I think that's a good addition. Then now these settings here, now I have a drop down and there's new effects. So saturation and transparency are new, I think. I think the brightness was already there and color obviously was already there. But saturation and transparency are new. So that's some nice additions. Now there's also audio effects. So let's listen to the effect by itself. That's the pre preset effect. This area is also new. And now there's these effect blocks. For example, the pitch. That's pretty cool. Also, you can just set it. So 100 is 100%. I guess zero is the normal one. Yeah. And then pan left, right. This is interesting because uh, Scratch used to only support mono sound and you can still only import mono, uh, mono audio. And the way stereo works, by the way, is um, that there's, if you're wearing headphones, if you're just, if you only have one speaker or two speakers that are really close to each other, it won't have the same effect. But if you're wearing headphones, there's actually two speakers in your headphones, one on the right and one on the left, and they can uh, play audio independently from each other. So let's say you have pan left, right at minus 25. Now, I think... Now it's playing a bit more to the left if we do minus 100. 100% of the sound will be played in the left ear. So that's interesting. You could use that for different things. For example, in a game uh, to make um, uh, the surrounding sounds. If there's like a sound system of... So if you're making a platformer, for example, and there's a box or whatever making sounds, then you could make it stereo this way which is really interesting. I'm gonna make a tutorial about that. You can just click in the description. There's gonna be a link as soon as I've done that, how to do that. And also I'm gonna make a tutorial 
how to get stereo music, for example. I've already figured out a trick how to get stereo music into your projects, even though it only supports mono imports. So um, that's also going to be a tutorial, so click the link in the description to get to that one. So the next new block is the contains block, which checks if the string in the front contains the string in the back. For example, apple starts with an A, so it's true. But if you go for B, it's not true. So that's pretty simple. So this one is a really good one. I've been waiting for this one for a while. The way you used to do it was a bit longer. Now you can just, let's create a new list. Test. And now item number of thing in list. This is, oh, I've been waiting for so long to get something like this. The way you used to do it is you would search through the list and then if you found the thing uh, you were searching for the, the list item, then you would set a variable to that number. But now, if I just add one, two, three, for example, the position with the two is obviously the two. Or So if I add apple, if I'm looking for apple here, it gives me the four. This is great. You can really, this is probably the best feature of Scratch 3 because I've been working uh, so long with different methods to get this done and now it's finally just in the Scratch engine. So that's great. Now there's a new drag mode. So the way it used to be was you would just go here into your info, which I guess is gone now, uh, the sprite info and set draggable on or off and you couldn't change it while the project was going. But now this can change it just like this and not draggable and it's probably yeah it's still draggable now because I'm in the editor but if I were outside of the project it would not be draggable the scratch cat now another fantastic feature is um, where is it there go to front this already existed but now also back exists that's fantastic and also this one in scratch 2 whenever you had a project with many uh, sprites the layering got so confusing you never knew what you were doing and now you can just do back go backward one layer or go forward one layer hallelujah i mean we've been waiting for this for so long and now we finally have it so oof. thank you mit now another thing in the looks tab is costume number or costume name also see that's also great i could imagine some good uses for that another renaming change is that play sound is now called start sound but for some reason play sound until done is still called play sound until done i mean i guess it kind of makes sense but yeah so that's all that's new in scratch 3.0 at least with the blocks and now we'll go over to a really exciting feature which is that now you can use it on an iPad or tablet in general and also your phone. So we're go I'm going to try this out on my iPad and we'll see what it's like. Okay, so let's have a look at the website. It still works the same way it used to on an iPad. And now let's go to one of my older projects. This one for example. And as you can see now, the website with the, with the preview of the game or the actual game now works actually so it used to just say sorry scratch is not supported on uh, on mobile devices but now the project is loading and let's see how it works so now let's press the flag and it works so i'm guessing that projects that are based around mouse well, let me maximize this around the mouse around the cursor no keyboard input are going to work really well with this yeah i can perfectly click anything go back and let's start the game yeah so that's working great let's see if the actual game works let's go over here yeah so that works really well um yeah so you could basically any game that's centered around your mouse and not around your keyboard can be played pretty well on a mobile device which is pretty cool and let me just smash this. Yeah, and it even works pretty well. It doesn't lag, it's running pretty well. Yeah, great. So as far as I know, you can even see inside 
Yeah, and now you can code on your iPad. See, you can pull this apart, put it back together. That's great. Yeah, that's really, that's a nice feature. I like that. Okay. But sadly, even the, but sadly, the new version does have some problems. For example, if you look at this game I'm working on, which is called U-Boat World War II, it runs normally if you play it like this. See, and you can drive around and stuff. That's just, I'm going to release it in a couple months, I think. Or maybe a couple weeks, I don't know. Depending on when Scratch is fixed, because if you look inside, there's no, no scripts. It's working, the game is working, but even the sp sometimes the sprites don't load and there's no scripts. So what's going on here? I, I really don't know. See, now the sprites have loaded now that I stopped the game, but all the scripts are gone. But the game is still working, but I just don't see the scripts. So I can't continue working on the game, which is stupid. So I, I really hope they fix this because this is a huge problem. I don't know if this is uh, just a coincidence and this doesn't happen very often on projects, but this is really grinding my gears, you know? So this is really, and it works normally if you play it like this, but um, you know, so that's kind of annoying. I hope there's not too many people with this problem, but um, if there are, I really hope they fix this because this is not beta or alpha or like work in progress. This is the finished version of Scratch that we have right now. And this is not, I mean, I, I mean, it's free and stuff, so we shouldn't complain, but this is not really, this is not great uh, stuff that they're giving us here. So I really hope they fix that. But other than that, the features in Scratch 3 look really cool, but um, if they work, they, they'll, it'll be the best version of Scratch. It's gonna be fantastic, but uh, these things seem a bit um, off. And also I hope that they add that you can change the layout back. Because after Scratch 1.4, I had to get used to the preview being on the left for Scratch 2, and now it's back on the right again. So what do we want to do? Just make up your mind, okay? Uh, now I'm so used to it being on the left, I can't use 1.4, and now I can't use 3 until I just get used to it again, you know? So... We'll see what it turns out like, but um, I'm positive it's gonna be okay. I think they're working really hard at MIT to make this work a bit better than it is right now. Uh, but I've been seeing a lot of people complaining on projects about um, it not really working. But I think as soon as they fix these problems, it's gonna be great, but right now, I'm seeing a bit of a problem with it, so I hope they fix it rather soon. Anyways, I'm gonna continue working now on the tutorial and also on those two other tutorials. This this video here is probably gonna be up before the other ones, but um, I'm trying to work as fast as I can, okay? So uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe. I'm really happy that a lot of people are now starting to find the channel and uh, starting to subscribe also. We're almost at 200, I think now, which is great for a channel with three videos over the last two years almost. So um, thank you very much for subscribing and uh, see you next time.